Welcome to the five dumbest things on Wall Street, where this week UN delegates from around the world came to New York City to push for peace, harmony, and parking spots. Seriously, every year they block traffic. How can they solve Syria when they can't even figure out the Upper East Side? Okay, number five, Blackberry's Flying Circus. Wow, Fairfax Financial is buying Blackberry, Lock Stock, and Bombardier. Now there's one that flew right by us. The sputtering smartphone maker, which received a lifeline in the form of a $9 takeout bid from Fairfax Monday, added a larger plane to its corporate jet fleet in July, even as it was slashing jobs to cut expenses. Setting aside the larger question, and it's a big one, as to why Fairfax CEO Prem Watsa keeps throwing good money after bad at this technologically irrelevant company, we still don't know why BlackBerry would be jet shopping instead of cash hoarding. If CEO Thornton Hines was searching for a way to look down on Tim Cook's team at Apple, buying a private jet was not the best way. Okay, number four, Foolish Filmmaker. Here's a dumbest tale that has anything but a Hollywood ending. The SEC charged Lawrence Robbins with insider trading Monday, saying the filmmaker pocketed over $1.5 million in illegal profits on two biotech mergers by using confidential information. Robbins used his illicit winnings to finance a 2012 flop called Playback, which garnered a mere 264 bucks at the box office. What an idiot. Everybody knows you're supposed to stash insider trading profits in a Cayman Island account and not a Christian Slater vehicle. We certainly don't expect the writers of the Stevie Cohen story to make that mistake. All right, number three, Seldex shenanigans. Remember the good old days when Jack Grubman and Henry Blodgett set astronomical price targets on crappy stocks to drum up investment banking business? Well, if you're too young to recollect the quid pro quo research of the go-go 90s, then have no fear. A classic case was on display Monday when Lyric Swan analyst Howard Liang raised his price target on Seldex from 29 to 45 per share. Shares of the cancer drug company popped 10% on Liang's cheerleading to 33, raising its market cap to $2.7 billion. So why does Liang believe Seldex is worth $1 billion more today than it was last Friday? Perhaps it's because Seldex raised $90 million this past February in an offering co-managed by Lyrinc. And one can only imagine that Lyrinc will be right there the next time Seldex needs to raise money. And Liang too, of course, with a pom-pom in each hand. Okay, number two, Ben Moshe's big mouth. Hey, Paula Dean, guess who's coming to dinner? AIG CEO Bob Ben Moshe joined the Outcast TV chef in the hot seat Tuesday after making racially insensitive remarks, acquitting the uproar over banker bonuses during the financial crisis to African-American lynchings decades ago in the Deep South. Ben Moshe later apologized for his, quote, poor choice of words, but not before being pilloried by a number of government officials, including Maryland Democrat Elijah Cummings. Come on, Bob. You don't have to be a genius to know that Frank talk is fine, but Leo Frank talk is most certainly not. And the dumbest thing on Wall Street this week, Chrysler's conundrum. Chrysler Group filed for a public offering with the SEC Monday as part of an effort to prevent itself from going public. I don't know, you figure it out. We sure as heck haven't been able to. Majority owner Fiat has been seeking to buy the rest of Chrysler, but the company has been unable to reach an agreement with the UAW on evaluation of the union's remaining shares. Sergio Marchionne, CEO of both Fiat and Chrysler, says the trust wants $5 billion for its stake. Fiat, however, is only willing to pony up $2 billion. So in order to prove its number is the correct one, the union is pushing for a Chrysler IPO, even though settling and not going public is the best result for both sides. Forgive us if this is tricky. It's breaking our brains too. You see, we've never seen an IPO driven purely by spite either. There you have it, the five dumbest things on Wall Street this week. We'll see you next week, but for now, thanks for watching.